may interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast to bring you this special update. 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 Your update will begin in three, two, one. <laughs> Today we are here with the Honorable Dr. Andes Gracita Arendelle, the Honorable President of Parliament, the first ever President of Parliament, and still President of Parliament, <laughs> of Embassy, like it was destined because you left and it came back to you. Um, God is good. All the time. The number two candidate on the UP party for the upcoming parliamentary elections on August 29th. Um, Dr. Andes, welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us. Um, I never yep. left. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is not your first time. This you've been in this political scene for a while. You've been, you've campaigned um, numerous times. Uh, this is just another go round for you. Um, is it any different this time around than for, for previous years? Um, not different mm -hmm. in the sense of um, contacting the people, stay in touch with them, um, making sure that you bring the issues forward that you want to share with the public, what you want to change on their behalf once re-elected, mm -hmm. um, but difference is tackling it from the point of view of being a sitting parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it's very exciting, um, mm -hmm. actually. Um, it is also different because the past four years, I consider that as a transition phase mm -hmm. for St. Martin mm -hmm. into the new status. Mm -hmm. Transition uh, phase whereby we had to build our nation. Yeah. Um, my slogan, for example, um, is building our nation from the bottom up, because that is what I have experienced in the past four years. Right. Now the campaign, it, it's also very different because you're not just a certain MP, but you're the President of Parliament. And that alone comes with its own sort of <laughs> responsibilities, responsibilities and burdens. Or absolutely. The protocols and proto everything that goes with it. Yeah, how do you find the time? I make the time. Right. I make the time. I, you know, as women, sorry men, <laughs> uh, we we have the ability still um, to a great extent to multitask. Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, I have my my day planning well organized. Right. I know my responsibilities, so it's not a chore for me. So it's not a burden for me. Right. Um, you just have to plan and plan ahead and plan uh, plan very. Um, wisely yeah. and I, I get it done. Is it something you, you enjoy? Because I do. Look, looking at, at parliament meetings, I give people will look at it and, and say, boy, this is a tough job. You have to sit down there for hours. Correct. And is it something, is it a task that you really en you enjoy doing for the people? I enjoy doing it for the people. In fact, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Uh, but once sitting there, indeed, sitting for many, many hours, even for that, mm -hmm. you have to be mentally ready and i am ready knowing the political arena that that i'm i'm presiding over mm -hmm. the different factions and uh, the public who expects you to handle the meetings in such a professional way that still some sense is made out of the politicking in between right. it's a it's it's a task but it's also a skill that i have acquired um, over the years right. and again i enjoy doing my work i'm very grateful for the opportunity now you're running again with the green team the second time around running with the the, the green party um why is this party such a great fit for, for Gracita? it's a great fit from the outset it's a great fit because i have been instrumental also mm -hmm. uh, four years ago when we did, when we discussed the the formation, uh, formation of the up party mm -hmm. so uh, from that perspective it wasn't anything new it was more um, in this sense to build the party even stronger, make it e even better, uh, make it representative in such a way that we really have the opportunity to execute the policies and programs that we, the United People's Party, wants to implement for the people of St. Martin. Right. Now the, the, the party, a lot of people have always said the party has a dynamic leader, a, a person who delivers. That's correct. Um, How is your um, relationship with, um, with, with the leader of the, of the UP? And, Excellent. And moving forward and getting things done. I won't even, you know, I, I didn't even let you finish your question. Yeah. Because I, <laughs> I, 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 have, I have nothing more than utmost respect mm -hmm. and confidence in the leadership of Theodore Heidegger. Right. That was one of the reasons why four years ago when I was approached and I discussed it with my former party, mm -hmm. the PPA, PPA. Um, and with the candidates and the board of the party. And this is very important to mention yeah. that um, that it was the best thing to do for St. Martin to join forces. His skills and my abilities and yeah. skills, I think it made an absolutely dynamic uh, 
um, combination to take this country forward and that is and upward. And we hope that that continues again come August 29. I am absolutely um, not hopeful, but I am confident mm -hmm. that that will be the case on August 29, 2014. And you made history. I mean, you'll go down in history as the first ever parliament, um, president of parliament after the um, 10, 10, 10 election for countries in Martin. Um, this, I'm sure, means a lot to you, right? It does. Mm -hmm. It means a lot to me. It, lo it means a lot to my, to my parents, right. um, who are very proud, of course, right. um, to see their daughter. Because, again, our parents, they invest in us, you know, mm -hmm. going to school. And they, that's the only thing they could hope, that when you go to school, you finish your studies, and you come back and you give back to your country. Right. And, and that's what I've done. Um, but also the support that I got from the people of St. Martin in, in general, when I'm walking, going back to my, to the, to my car or to the office um, late in the evenings or early in the mornings and the support that I get from people who I have not, never met, young, old, born here, not born here, who either listen to the, to the parliament meetings or um, watch it, watches it on, on TV, um, people who know that I've been doing more than just presiding over Parliament right. um, based on my, my other interests, right. for example, reading at schools, etc. It shows the love, it shows the support, and that gives me a lot of courage to, to continue working and serving my country right. to the best of my ability. Now if you look over the four years, if you were to pinpoint one or two um, um, accomplishments um, in Parliament, um, what, would, what would you say those, those are? To, in Parliament, yeah. in general, or in general, or in Parliament. In general, the first thing is, and and um, you know, people probably underestimate it, or they don't stand still by it. But just building from scratch, building a Parliament the, for a Parliament. Yes, that's right. From from zero to what it is today. Mm -hmm. Now you could argue about the content in terms of how. how we as MPs interact, but, but, that's, but that's besides the point. Right. But just the structure mm -hmm. from scratch, that alone gives me gives me so much fulfillment in the sense that I was um, privileged right. to be able to do so. And that indeed will go down in history. No one can take that away from me. Parliament has been through um, some adventures, as I, as I like to call it, mm -hmm. over the last four years. In a way, uh, was there exercises in democracy, were those um, good for St. Martin in, 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 a, in a certain way when you look at it? I mean, everybody knows the bad thing, the cussing and this, but were they, in your opinion, good for St. Martin in a certain way? All countries, right. including St. Martin, has the right to have a mulligan. Right, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you absolutely. Know, so you, you're entitled to, have to, to make your mistakes yeah. because they are your mistakes. Right. And um, after we, we chose to, to have this, this separate status um, status, mm -hmm. um, we had to, as a country in its totality, had to build from scratch as well. Right. Uh, not only Parliament, which was built, um, as I stated earlier, mm -hmm. from nothing, but also the Ministry of Justice, for example, uh, was a new institution of governance that right. had to be set up from scratch. Um, we had to get a custom. We, the people, the, the administrators, the civil servants, right. had to get accustomed of the separation of the two powers right. and also in, in dealing with the entire decision-making uh, process. Right. So if mistakes have been made, made, and I'm sure they have been, those are all mistakes, but to be corrected. True. If you just leave it at what it is, that's something else. But uh, on moving forward, we correct it and we, and we I, I, you know what, in general, we have not done that at all. Right. Some people looking at the meetings or listening or whatever would say sometimes, boy, that's it, that's strict. <laughs> you know, you're, you're always, <laughs> that gavel is always ready, correct, <laughs> so correct. to speak. Is that, was that signs of, you know, just a growing parliament, everybody just getting used to procedures, that's what it is, or you just really have to, you know, keep control every now and I'm, then? I'm, I'm like that. Right. I, I like to make sure that things come, um, are conducted in a very disciplined manner. By the book. I mean, I, I mean, after all, we are a parliament. Right. And uh, while there have been many, many light moments in between, mm -hmm. coming from the either the, the minister side or uh, usually, usually from the side of the of the parliamentarians, some parliamentarians, um, which evokes laughter mm -hmm. from the public tribune. 
my role as the president of parliament is to make sure that there is everyone adheres to the rules and regulations and you might not you may not incite right. um, the public has also has to make sure that it abides by the rules of the house of parliament right. um, and that task i am very much aware of it right. i cannot be part of the of the total package um, you you are one of the 15 mm -hmm. but you're primus in the powers you are still um, the first under equals right. as i say in das eerste under gelijke right. you have to maintain the code. you have to maintain that and make sure that the order is kept that's why you're sitting there otherwise it will be chaos right. and it, it could or can be uh, chaos very easily if people do not take you serious right and um, that is a task that i was very much aware of as well from the outset because it was the first institution that we had because it was the first role that people would see in the new in the new system um, because i am a woman right uh, also in in such uh, such a position i was very much aware from the outset of what my task responsibilities my entire attitude right. is and should be once I assumed and accepted that position. One of only two women in Parliament, by the way. That's yes, correct. That's right. And we need to do something about it. Yes. <laughs> Number one is make sure that, that um, women remain in Parliament mm -hmm. and that, that a few more joins us. I think Parliament is the only place where, in Samaritan, where men actually outnumber that's correct. women in any kind of a uh, group setting. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, well, we could do something about that. Yeah. No, in as if. As in the, the next, uh, in August. Yeah. <laughs> As for the campaign coming up, I mean, there's so many issues in St. Martin, mm. um, from top to bottom. Is there any that you're specifically going to focus on on the campaign trail? There are four points that, um, in general, which will also come up in our in our uh, program, in the up party program. Right. But four points that I specifically will help push mm -hmm. in its totality um, has to do with um, safety and security. Mm -hmm. And under safety and security, it's a broad umbrella. But then my baby is domestic violence. Always has been. And <laughs> yeah, exactly, for right. the past 14 years. Right. Um, in fact, and maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but mm -hmm. I have been working to submit a d domestic violence law. Okay. And it's, um, it's on my desk. It took four years. Um, the entire parliamentary process is a process that is very slow right. by, 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 by design, right. um, almost, uh, so to speak. Um, so on the safety and security, I will, be con I will continue to champion that because with domestic violence is also relational violence and in the relation you have to be with kids as well. So right. it is good that um, if there's peace and if there's none, you need to create peace, especially for the kids. Especially for children. It affects them. So indirectly, that's my focus, safety and security. Other one, of course, is education. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that the large amount of money um, that we have on the budget that that is used more effectively for education yeah, the biggest budget expenditure absolutely yeah. and the straight straight jacket manner of saying okay you are this is the way we're going to do it because these are the schools that you have to um, pass through no if there's someone in in class that has talent uh, whether it is in painting or in sports um, it, whatever, give them that chance, pick those kids out right. and don't let them drop out because they have to follow in a certain straight jacket. Mm -hmm. That is not really beneficial in general to, to um, the, the brilliant minds that we have there and that, that we are losing. Right. Um, so uh, from the four, these are two of, two of the issues that I would be uh, focused on. Absolutely. So if somebody was to um, step up to you on the campaign trail and they probably will, <laughs> <laughs> to have a conversation or whatever and they just you know just let's say a first time voter for example mm -hmm. they say but why should i vote for 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 Bersander? why should i vote for, for gracita what would you tell them because gracita is committed she gets the job done <laughs> i i'm qualified i know what i'm doing and um, my my passion and my commitment is to ensure a better quality of life for everyone right. and where do you think the up party is taking um, St. Martin in the next four years? Where do you want to see St. Martin in the next four years? A bright future. Mm -hmm. A bright future in the sense of job creation, 
education, as I mentioned, job creation in terms of economy, that's, right. that was my third uh, point, um, safety and security, uh, more green everywhere else, and not only in terms of party color, party but also in terms of, of the environment. The environment. Well, we've been speaking to the number two candidate on the OPSLE, Dr. Anders, uh, the President of Parliament, the Honorable Gassita Arundel. Ms. Arundel, thank you very much for being here. Good luck on the campaign trail and um, bring it home. Yes, we will. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Tune in to Update at 12.15 on Mondays and 5 p.m. on Wednesdays on SOS Radio and on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. on 102.7 FM.